Kendro or ASK um, and signed by International Environment Network. I feel privileged and honored that I as a Bengali can add voice to the plight of the indigenous people of my land. However, a part of me also feels ashamed that I come here as a Bengali whose fellow people have been and continue to carry out ethnic displacement, land grabbing, human rights violation, rape, and other forms of violence against the indigenous people or the Jumas in Chidong Hill Tracks for over four decades now. Before going into further details on our position on the indigenous people, I want to respond to a few points made by our Honorable Iqbal Ahmed, first secretary of Bangladesh Mission. First, Mr. Ahmed starts by stating that Bangladesh has no indigenous people, and instead he uses the phrases ethnic minority and tribal people. This is the same position that has been taken by Bangladesh government, both during the tenure of Bangladesh Nationalist Party, 2001-2006, and during the current tenure of the Army League, 2009 and present. In addition, the Ministry of CHT Affairs has also insisted, insisted on using phrases like small ethnic groups, which brings into question the intention of the ministry officials as well. Yet, IP of Bangladesh have insisted for last decade um, that these terms are insulting, limiting and not acceptable to them, and continue to campaign to have themselves recognized as indigenous people in the Bangladesh constitution. Therefore, we categorically reject Mr. Ahmed's position that CHD is not an issue for this UN forum. We respectfully request Bangladesh government to recognize this as an issue for of indigenous people above and beyond all other definitions. Second, Mr. Ahmed lists the various steps taken towards implementation of CHD Accord, but puts the responsibility for non-implementation on non-cooperation by IP leaders. But we would respectfully disagree with this interpretation and point out that Bangladesh government has not taken these steps in a sincere fashion. For example, the land commissioner is not accepted by the IP leaders because the current commissioner has become very controversial due to his exhibited pro-Bengali bias, including his insistence of holding land survey, which would codify illegal holding of land by Bengali settlers. Third, Mr. Ahmed gives examples of some statistics of development but neglects to mention that the primary beneficiary of these are the Bengali settlers who were uh, once 4% of the population of CHD, but through settler program of last three decades have become more than 50% of the population, turning the indigenous people into a disappearing people in their own land. We want to thank Mr. Lars Sanders Bear for his in-depth study on the status of implementation of the CHD Accord of 1997, we, both the indigenous and supportive non-governmental delegates from Bangladesh, completely agree with Mr. Baird that one of the main causes of conflicts affecting IPP is the lack of recognition of indigenous people's rights, include land and resource rights. Violation of human rights of IP is unfortunately a common occurrence in Bangladesh. In most cases, it is the military and security forces that perpetrate them, and in others, impoverished Bengali settlers brought over to colonize the CHD are used as human shields. Ask. My organization strongly holds that full implementation of the 1997 CHT Accord is mandatory. At the same time, ASK recognizes that fundamentally it is not the ultimate measure. Its main aim is to restore a just peace, demilitarize the region, provide for rehabilitation, and set the stage for CHT-specific institutions to pursue their self-determined development. But such development efforts can hardly, hardly start unless the basic problems are addressed. As believes that affirmative actions and special measures are necessary to ensure that the rights of Adivashis are guaranteed. Special attention is also necessary to accumulate and bring together all the scattered clauses of existing treaties and declarations that may benefit them. The 1997 Accord agrees to keep six cantonments or army garrisons in the CHD. Kagrachari, Rangamati, Bandarbon, Ruma, Alikodon, Dihinala. The Accord requires that the temporary army camps almost 500 at height of conflict are withdrawn. Yet the current situation is that most of the temporary army camps are still deployed in the area. The army officer outranks their civilian counterpart in each region of CHT. Therefore, in any government civilian counterpart in each, sorry, therefore in any government meeting in the area, the civilian officer at the meeting is outranked by his military counterpart. The region has in effort de facto military rule. There are no other regions that have so many garrisons. The only other garrisons in Bangladesh are in Dhaka, Savar, Kumilla, Bogura, Rangpur, and Chittagong. There are many districts in Bangladesh that do not have a single cantonment, while each CHT district has two permanent cantonments and scores of temporary camps. 
In total, a quarter to a third of Bangladesh's total army is said to be in CHD, which is only 10% of the country's land mass. Also, it is not only about presence, but the role of the army that is the issue. The problem is that members of the army often behaves like an army of occupation on perpetual war footing. Ask demands for participation rights and democratic process where civilians have voices. As long as the military remains in CHD, Bangladesh cannot boast on being a democratic nation. During the many arson attacks perpetrated against the indigenous peoples in the last few years, there have been incidents when Buddhist temples have been burned down and Buddhist statues smashed to the ground. Several studies show the construction of Buddhist temples or meditation centers remain fought with intimidation from the state military. Even more to the arson attacks, during some of the most recent attacks, uh, Bengalis have reportedly brought out Buddha statues from burned temple compounds and beat the statues up in an effort to permanently destroy the spirit of the hill people, majority of whose trust remains in Lord Buddha in the power of nonviolence. During one of the most recent attacks, Survival International reported that the army and police allegedly refused to allow a relief team carrying supplies for the Jummas to visit the affected areas. Mr. Robi Shankar Talukdar, who was the leading member of the relief team, said they want the victims to die without food and shelter. This is a clear violation of basic human rights and humanitarian norms. Is this, if this is not the perfect example of systematic racial cleansing, then what is? We ask recommends to the government of Bangladesh that the special reporter on indigenous people, the special reporter on violence against women, the special reporter on religious intolerance, in addition to other relevant special reporters, should be invited to visit Bangladesh, including the Chidong Hill Tracks, to investigate alleged cases of violation of human rights under their respective mandates. As further recognizes that safeguarding guarantee of peace accord is essential and the accord needs to be endorsed. Building upon the safeguarding process, local governments can participate in peace building in order to eradicate the mistrust that has been built over time. To the UNPFI, ASH recommends that in line with its previous recommendation on the matter, PFI must address the cases of impunity, should request the UN Department of Peacekeeping Operation to establish a screening mechanism to ensure that perpetrators of human rights from Bangladesh and elsewhere are not allowed to participate in UN peacekeeping operations. Thank you, Madam Chair.